Hey everyone, today I wanna to answer the five questions I see most often on the social security earnings limit. This is important stuff to know. If you run afoul of these rules, you'll risk receiving an overpayment notice and potentially having your benefits turned off. So you need to carefully understand how this works. Today, instead of covering the earnings limit in its entirety, I generally make a video on this every year when the numbers are updated. Instead, today, I wanna to answer the five most common questions that come in through the comments of this channel and on my blog. They are, how much can I earn? What happens to withheld benefits? Is the income limit based on single or joint income? What if I retire during the year after exceeding the annual limit? And finally, what do they consider earnings for this limit? Two quick things here before we jump all the way into answering these questions. First, be aware that we're talking about the social security income limits for retirement benefits, not disability or SSI. And second, the earnings limit on Social Security is not the same as income taxes on Social Security, so I don't want you to get the two confused. If you look around the channel, you'll see several videos that cover each of these topics in depth, and that'll help to clarify some of this. And I'm also gonna link those up in the description below so you can continue learning on this. You know, one of the most common questions I get that I didn't even include in that list is, Devin, why do we have an earnings limit? I think that's a fair question that we should probably address. There are a lot of people who think that the earnings limit is unnecessary and should be eliminated. You know, I tend to agree. There's not really a good reason to have this in place today. There's already a reduction in benefits that serves as a deterrent to filing early. But if someone wants to make that decision, I say it should be up to the individual. But I also understand why this was put into place in the beginning of the program. You know, the rationale behind the entire program of Social Security was to create a safety net. The original intent of the program was not to supplement retirement income like we use it for today, but instead it was to keep the elderly out of poverty. The truth is that today's earnings limit is actually pretty generous compared to where the Social Security earnings limit began. The original Social Security Act that President Roosevelt sent to Congress featured a very restrictive earnings limit. It said, no person shall receive such old age annuity unless he is not employed by another in a gainful occupation. That meant that even if you had a single dollar in wages from a job, you couldn't collect a Social Security benefit. Thankfully, the system has changed to the system that we have in place today that does allow for individuals to have some earnings from work while they are also receiving a social security benefit. So I'd like to hear from you down in the comments below. Do you think the earnings limit should be eliminated? So let's jump right into these top five questions. First, how much can I earn? Well, the first thing to know is that right now, the earnings limit only applies before your full retirement age. That age is specific to your date of birth, but for everyone born in 1960 or later, the full retirement age is 67. Once you reach that age, you can earn a billion dollars a year and continue to receive your full Social Security benefit. The earnings limit will not apply at full retirement age or later. But before your full retirement age, there is a hard limit that generally changes every year, so you have to keep up with this. And if you want to make that easy, just subscribe to this YouTube channel because I do an update for these numbers as soon as I see them. In 2022, if you make more than $19,560, the Social Security Administration will withhold $1 in benefits for every $2 in income that exceeds that amount. The one exception is during the calendar year you attain full retirement age. During that period, the earnings limit nearly triples to $51,960 and the withholding amount is not as steep. In that band, for every $3 you earn over the income limit, Social Security will withhold $1 in benefits. Again, the $19,560 amount is the number for 2022, but that amount does increase on an annual basis going forward. So if your benefits are stopped due to the earnings limit, what happens to withheld benefits? Well, you aren't missing payments that you'll never get back your benefit amount will be recalculated at your full retirement age to reflect the months that benefits were withheld. For example, assume your full retirement age is 67 and you file at 62. There are 60 reduction months applied to your benefit. If at some point you start working part-time and this results in five months of benefits being withheld, 
your benefit will be recalculated at full retirement age as if you had 55 reduction months instead of 60. The next question, is the income limit based on single or joint income? Most married couples are used to having all of their household income counted together in one big pot. For example, if you file your taxes as married filing jointly, earnings from both spouses are counted together to determine how much you owe in taxes. So it makes sense to wonder what happens if a spouse earns more than the Social Security income limit. How does that affect your benefits if you want to file early? The answer is yes, it could, and no, it won't. It depends. But thankfully, the answer really isn't that complicated to figure out. The simple but incomplete answer to this is no, joint earnings do not count. The earnings test is an individual test. If a husband and wife are both collecting a Social Security benefit from work that they individually performed, their spouse's excess earnings cannot affect them. As long as the benefits you receive come from your own work history, they are insulated. For example, if your wife goes back to work, it may affect her benefit payment, but it won't affect yours. But here's where this can get a little tricky. Excess earnings, those earnings that are over the limit, will affect your benefits and any benefits paid from your benefits. So if anyone is collecting benefits from your work and you have excess earnings, their benefit will also be affected. For example, if your wife is collecting a spousal benefit and you have excess earnings, both your benefit and her spousal benefit portion will be suspended. The exception to this, though, is for an ex-spouse. An ex-spouse's excess earnings cannot impact your Social Security benefits. And then, what if I retire during the year after I've already exceeded the annual limit? Well, the earnings limit is almost always based on your annual earnings, but in certain circumstances, it could be your monthly earnings that are counted. The monthly income limit was created because the Social Security Administration realized that some people who retire mid-year have already earned more than their annual earnings limit. And they recognized that it wasn't fair to make those individuals wait until the next year to file for benefits if they were truly retired. So in some cases, it's your monthly earnings that are counted. For example, let's say you earned $100,000 from January until July in your job, and then you retired in the summer, and then you filed for benefits. Well, in this case, the monthly limit would make you eligible to receive Social Security, even though you are clearly in excess of the annual test. To make this alternative monthly limit as easy as possible to understand, we can address the differences by answering two important questions. First, how do you know when the Social Security Administration will apply the monthly limit versus the annual limit? And then, how much is the monthly limit? So let's walk through each of these separate questions one by one. First, how do you know if you're covered by the monthly income limit or the annual income limit? Well, the Social Security Administration says that the monthly earnings test applies when an entitled beneficiary has one or more non-service months in a grace year. Here's what that means. In the first year you receive Social Security benefits and have a month of earnings that is less than the monthly earnings limit amount, the income limit turns into a monthly limit test. It will run for the remainder of that calendar year, and after that, it's back to the annual test. The second question is, how much is the monthly income limit? Well, the monthly income limit is simply the applicable annual limit divided by 12. For example, if you're subject to the monthly limit in 2022, then you'd take the $19,560 and divide by 12. That would give you your maximum monthly earnings allowed, and for this year, that would be $1,630. Again, the exception is if you attain full retirement age during this year, in that case, your monthly income limit would be $4,330 because it's one-twelfth of that higher band. Now, the monthly income limit is deep enough that I've created a video just to cover this topic, and you can find that down in the description below. And then the big question, the one I'm asked most often is, what counts as earnings? Well, thankfully, the Social Security Administration makes it easy to understand for most types of income that you might normally receive. So first, let's look at the income that does not count. The income that does not count towards the earnings limit includes pension payments, most annuity payments, IRA and retirement account distributions, dividends, interest income, capital gains. As the law is currently written, you can receive an unlimited amount of income from those sources and receive your full 
Social Security benefit. The income that does count in the earnings limit is employment income. And that means gross employment wages if you're an employee and or your net earnings from self-employment. Now that nice concise list will take care of about 95% of all the income types that exist, but there are numerous other types of income that can cause confusion. You might have back pay, bonuses, vacation pay, deferred compensation, fiduciary fees, renewal commissions, the list goes on and on. And unfortunately, we can't go through all of those in detail here because even the Social Security Administration's page lists 88 different types of income. And then to confuse it even further, there are some types of income that's not counted for employees, but it is counted for those who are self-employed. Now, down in the description, I'm going to link to that page so you can go over and read it for yourself. But before you get too stressed out about this, just keep in mind that 95% of all income sources are easily classified with that simple list that we covered at first. Hey, down in the comment section, let me know. Did I miss anything? Do you still have questions after watching this? If I see enough of the same questions come in, I'll know that I need to do a follow-up to this video. And if I did answer your questions, would you mind giving me a thumbs up? That lets YouTube know that you found this valuable, which means they'll share it with a wider audience. And one last thing before we go, if you haven't already downloaded my Social Security Cheat Sheet, you should. This has the annual earnings limit amount and lots of other information on it. And once you download it, as long as you stay on my email list, I'll send you the latest version every year as soon as it's updated. Thank you for watching.